Welcome to the online video homework for topic 7.1 and 7.2 having to do with UV-Vis spectroscopy. Before you attempt the problems in this homework set, I would recommend that you read lessons 7.1 and 2 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2018 by Professors Tennyson, Hujiri, and Smith. One of the first things we learn about in the primer about the interaction of UV and visible light with molecules is the type of transitions that they cause in molecules. So this question is simply asking what type of transition is the lowest energy transition in a UV-Vis spectrum for a conjugated molecule. If you have a conjugated molecule, you will have pi bonds in addition to the sigma bonds in that molecule. And each bond, of course, has two electrons in it. And chemists use these lines to represent the energy levels, and higher in energy is a less stable energy state. And they use these little arrows up and down to indicate the electrons. So that's two electrons there and two electrons there. So we're representing the electrons that are in a pi bond and in a sigma bond. Now pi bonds are weaker and easier to break than our sigma bonds. And if you pull electrons out of the bond, it's going to take you some energy. And the light can promote those electrons to what we call the pi star or pi antibonding orbital. You'll also notice these abbreviations, H-O-M-O -O and L-U-M-O. And these just refer to the highest occupied molecular orbital, meaning the molecular orbital that has electrons in it that's at the highest energy. And the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital means the energy state that's available to hold electrons is the lowest energy one that is empty, so lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. In the primer, we learned that the two allowed types of transitions in these simple organic molecules are from the pi to the pi star orbital, or from the sigma to the sigma star orbital. Now, this question asks us for the lowest energy transition in the uv spectrum. The lowest energy transition is clearly going to be the pi to pi star transition. So, we would represent this as it is shown in the primer with an arrow between the two, this is how you would write down pi to pi star transition. The next question is asking you to draw an orbital representation of the highest occupied molecular orbital in the ground state of 1,3-butadiene. Now this mirrors a question that we had covered in the video homework for lesson 4.1 on simple pi conjugation. And to address a problem like this, you first, of course, have to know what 1,3-butadiene looks like as a simple molecular structure, as shown here. You need to know what orbitals are used to make the pi bonds, because the HOMO in a pi conjugated molecule, just like we saw in the previous problem, is going to be the pi bonding orbital. So you're trying to represent the orbitals that make up all the pi bonds in this molecule. Pi bonds are made when you have an overlap between two adjacent p orbitals. And if I was to draw those in on butadiene for each of the two pi bonds in the structure like this, I would be representing all the electrons in that pi conjugated system in their orbitals, and that's what I show over here. In the next problem, we're asked to rank homoluma gaps. So, to address this problem, we have to first identify how long each of these molecules' pi conjugated system would be. In the first one, we identify double, single, double, alternating around this segment. In the second one, we see double, single, double, single, alternating through a segment of this length. Here we see double, single, double, single, double. You have these pi bonds over here, but they're not pi conjugated with those over here. So the longest pi conjugate segment is the one that's highlighted. In this last one, you have double, single, double. So then if we figure out how many atoms are involved in each of these pi conjugated systems and use our general rule that a longer pi conjugated system equals a smaller energy gap, now we can rank these. If one belongs to the largest energy gap, the largest energy gap would be the shortest pi conjugated system. So that would be this one. The next shortest only has six atoms in its pi conjugated system. You don't really care how long the whole molecule is. It's just the pi conjugated system that contributes to that pi to pi star transition we're talking about here. And then third largest energy gap would be here. The smallest energy gap for the longest pi conjugated segment would belong to the molecule shown at the top left. And here's a relatively similar question to the previous one. It's asking us to rank these molecules in terms of their lambda max, one being the longest wavelength. 
Remember that lambda max is just the wavelength of maximum absorption, so that should be the energy corresponding to the pi pi star transition, but now expressed in terms of wavelength instead of energy unit. This question asks us a follow-up question that says which will have the highest extinction coefficient or molar absorptivity as well. And just as we said in the previous question, we know that a longer pi conjugated segment leads to a smaller energy gap, and that leads to a longer wavelength. Remember that there's an inverse relationship between energy and wavelength, where this is our wavelength. So the longest wavelength should correspond to the smallest energy gap, and that should be the longest pi conjugated segment. So the longest pi conjugated segment is in this molecule. Second longest would be here, and the shortest, of course, is just a single pi bond here. So if one is the longest wavelength, the longest wavelength is the smallest energy, and that corresponds to the longest pi conjugated system. This is one. And this is the second longest pi conjugated system. And this is the shortest pi conjugated system, which has the highest energy and the lowest wavelength. As for this last part of the question, asking about the highest extinction coefficient, or molar absorptivity, this really has to do with how many units within the molecule are capable of absorbing the light. And generally, the more pi bonds you have, the more light you'll be able to absorb per molecule, so the highest extinction coefficient, or the highest molar absorptivity, should belong to this molecule.